Sesuma Amna. She's also called Setna, uh, among other things. Uh, she is the concept for Inuit of sustainable development. She's the keeper of uh, the sea beasts. She's the keeper of uh, all animals that Inuit were making a living of. If the human beings, the Inuit making uh, not good use of the resources, she can punish the Inuit. She's living in the bottom of the sea. The shaman would go down to the bottom of the sea and calm her down and ask her what the human beings have done wrong. So he was communicating uh, or a mediator between her and the Inuit. So that's the story behind the <laughs> Sesuma Amna. My name is Lena Kilsen Holm. Uh, I'm from uh, Greenland. I'm Inuit, Inuk. Uh, originally, I'm from uh, South Greenland, uh, some, a place called uh, Rakotok. But uh, I've been living here in Nook uh, for the last uh, 25 years. I've been living from uh, or working with the Inuit Circumpolar Council. Uh, but before that, I'm educated uh, within the. Uh, I have an academic education uh, from the University of Greenland, where I was studying culture and history of Inuit. Sea ice uh, is not only to Greenlanders, but to Inuit, sea ice is, uh, has a very uh, deep uh, meaning above the uh, polar circle. Uh, you will see dog sleds today. The hunters and fishermen are making a living uh, from the sea ice by using the dog sledges on, on the sea ice. This is why it's so important because uh, otherwise you couldn't go anywhere in winter time. You couldn't go anywhere to fish or hunt if you didn't have a way of uh, traveling. When you are talking about the sea ice, what you hear everywhere is that uh, the sea ice is uh, developing uh, later in the autumn and it is breaking up uh, earlier in the spring. Not only is it uh, uh, acting like that, the sea ice is also becoming uh, thinner. The hunters were showing us uh, what routes they used to uh, navigate uh, on that in the uh, later years or within the last 10 years they are changing their routes not only on sea ice but also also on, on top of the ice caps that they used to travel on people are very uh, attached to where they live and we perceive the world in the way uh, that we are taught. The knowledge that are handed down to you from your ancestors are very uh, important and of very big value. And the day you can see that this knowledge, you will no longer be able to use it. That makes, I can imagine that the people will get very touched by that. If you or I uh, in one day or in a year loses our education, educational skills, that we are not anymore able to uh, uh, use the skills that we learned at university or other educational uh, institutions. This is how I understand that it is of great importance for them I w wouldn't say that I, w I would go there to help them I don't like the word help because uh, I'm Inuit myself and uh, of course uh, Inuit are maybe one people that are the most uh, uh, how, how can you call it 
researched upon, they know themselves what they want. They know themselves that changes are happening and they know that they will also have to adapt to the changes. The hunters from Alaska, from Canada and Karnak, they were able to talk about the sea ice together and talk about the changes and ask the right questions and uh, have the uh, more answers to the questions that than we have. I know people know that they will have to adapt, but they want to make it in their own ways of means. Yeah. At the same time, I'm also a little bit scared. Our hunting culture is uh, stressed to the edge. So it's not only climate change who are stressing our way of, of living, it's also the uh, animal rights organizations and other organizations. I think that, uh, like I said before, there has been a lot of misunderstanding and mis misinformation about our culture. We are bringing, trying to bring the correct picture out to the world. Not only to the outside world, but also within our own society. When the sea ice is gone, of course, our knowledge about it would have gone with the melting 